Well, hundreds of people braved the cold and the snow today to pack the Colorado State Capitol. Right now, a reproductive rights bill is facing its first committee test. And one of the main goals of this bill is affirming access to abortions in Colorado. And Denver 7 politics reporter Megan Lopez has been sitting in on the debate and joins us live at the Capitol. Megan, lawmakers tell you it's going to be a long night. Yeah, that's right, Ann and Shannon, a very late night. More than 300 people have signed up to testify either for or against this bill. It's the most packed that I've seen the Colorado State Capitol in quite a while, really maybe since COVID even began. Lots of people, and as you can imagine, lots of emotions with this topic. Quite simply, our rights are under attack. It's a debate that happens almost every year at the Colorado State Capitol. The gravity of what we're being asked to decide today. A debate about life, a debate about women's rights. In Colorado, since in the last 10 years, I think our number is over 100 of number of bills that we've defeated. This time, though, this debate is a little different. After three anti-abortion bills failed in a legislative committee last month on Wednesday. It has never been more critical that would protect abortion rights. A bill to protect choice. House Bill 1279 would codify in state law that everyone has the right to use or refuse contraception, that abortions are legal in Colorado, and that it's illegal to prosecute or punish someone who seeks one. This bill is all about ensuring access, and that's it, period, the end. DU political science professor Josh Wilson says this bill won't change much that's happening here. Very little will, will explicitly change with the passage of a law like this. But the conversation is in response to the events on a national level. For the first time in a very, very long time, a real chance that the Supreme Court is going to reverse Roe versus Wade or really dramatically open up oh, doors for states to regulate abortion in ways that we haven't seen before, is that you'll have states that protect and states that restrict. Supporters of the bill, like Representative Meg Froelich, say this is necessary. What we appreciate about this is that it sets the absolute framework and establishes that this is what we want in Colorado. During that committee hearing, though, Republican lawmakers raised concerns about when life begins. As stated in, in your bill, there is no right given to to the unborn through any stage of development. They also brought up the failed bills and the ballot measures and asked why a statutory change is needed. And if we believe that the people, that the citizenry, they're not going to change course, that they're going to continue down this trajectory of not having any sort of restriction on abortion. Why is this bill necessary? The debate over abortions is always emotional. One woman being forced to leave the hearing after an outburst. It's a conversation that's not new in Colorado and a debate that will likely lead to several late nights in the legislature. So the U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments for Dobbs versus the Jackson's Women Health Organization back in December. A, a ruling on that is expected as soon as June. So that's the timeline that a lot of states like Colorado are competing with when it comes to coming up with and codifying their own rules around abortion access. I'm live. Megan Lopez, number seven. All right. Like you said, going to be a long night. Megan, thank you. And as she mentioned there, the Reproductive Health Equity Act deals with more than just abortion rights. And you can read our summary of the bill right now on the DenverChannel.com.